In this module, we are going to go through uh, an important component in most of the modern web uh, applications, which is the database. So in the easiest definition to database, uh, it's just like a place where you store your data in a specific way. So in this module, we are going to go through NoSQL database, which is one of the types of a database that, that you would usually encounter uh, like when you're working on building some uh, web applications. Because like most of the time, people will visit your website because of the data. So if you are using uh, the best technology to build uh, your application and your website is scalable and accessible and you like you just like for all the usability stuff, uh, you just like make everything looks perfect, but you don't have the data, then people might not visit your website because they are not coming to your website as evaluator to evaluate how good is your, uh, let's say, uh, application or how well have you built your application. But they are visiting your website because they are looking for data. It's true, it's important to build uh, your application in just like most, uh, let's say, accurate way to give the user a whole experience, not just like for the data, but even like with just like the speed of your website, everything else. So it's all just like a whole package. We cannot just like rely on the technology to make our uh, website success. And we cannot just rely on the data to make our website uh, like uh, success. We have to integrate these two components or multiple components together to make sure that our website uh, looks and have everything the visitor might need in that specific manner. So for the objectives of this uh, uh, lecture, uh, we are going to understand the differences and how to map between uh, relation database management system and no skill database system. Since you already uh, have taken a course about uh, database before, then you will have some of uh, the foundational uh, concepts behind relational database, but you might not uh, been uh, through the concepts of NoSQL database. Then we will understand how to work with MongoDB, and we will understand uh, something we call it ORM, which is really, uh, really, uh, uh, like let's say, uh, aimed for relational database, and we will see the equivalent of uh, these uh, tools in, let's say, and uh, no skill database, and we will go through one of the, like the most uh, common ODM or uh, let's say object uh, uh, data uh, modeling tools, which is Mongoose, uh, in, uh, and we will use it with Node.js. Then we will understand how to perform different operations such as creating tables, uh, databases, all these kind of stuff in no skill database. We will go through it. So let's just like go through the steps or let's say start with web pages. So in most web pages, even like with the things that you've built so far, we either have one of these two uh, data type. We might have a static data where you just like type it or hard code it in your code or in your HTML and this data is not gonna be changed unless you have one specific or let's say uh, a professional who's gonna update these kind of stuff. So the updated or the data here is updated based on, uh, let's say uh, some criteria and it's done by uh, the people who are developing the website. So this is the static data and these are almost the same thing as some of the data that you had in your uh, personal budget uh, project, right? On the other hand, we have dynamic data. And we, when we say a dynamic data, we mean it's changing. So it's not something hard coded in your web pages. So whenever a user visits your website or web page, then the data is going to be populated based on the visit. So for today, you might just like go through or let's say visit the web page and you will find like two entries. Tomorrow you might visit and you will find five entries. So all these changes, it might not be 
coming from the heart uh, coded or it might not be heart coded in your system. So to be able to just like deal with dynamic data, you have to store it somewhere, right? So whenever a, a visitor come to your website, you will be able to fetch this data and uh, populate it in the web page that the user is visiting. So the data storage we usually uh, have is either we have a flat files or we have a database, right? So these are like one of the things that like in mo most of database uh, courses, you will encounter almost the same thing as flat files. What do we mean by flat files? And what is database? Why it's important to go with database? So let's just like start with the flat files. So let's assume that we have a website for uh, just like showing the movies or the latest movie, right? So if we have a flat files where we store all the data that we wanted to show to uh, the user, then we might have something like this. We might have in the first line here, we might have just like the header where the header here is the attributes. So for this file, the attributes we have is the serial, the movie title, the genre here, release date, and the reviews. Okay, and for each one, as you can see here, there is something we separated or we are using a separator here or delimiter here to delimit between or to separate between the entries, right? Or let's say the attributes. And for each, for each uh, line, there is just like represent one entry. So for the first entry or for the first one here, we can say it like the serial number for the first movie is number one and the title is movie one and the genre is horror here. And this is just like the uh, release date. And this is just like the customer reviews. For the second movie, you will have almost the same thing as what we had before. Okay, as you can see, it's just like fixed here. We have no problem. It might have just like really good uh, representation for our uh, backend data. Okay, but the thing is, this kind of uh, data storage, it's not that good because it might have multiple flaws that we are going to talk about, or let's say it's not just the flaws, it's just like disadvantage. So it's not that efficient to work with. So I will just like give you one thing here, which is what if like, let's say we have this data and we just like been using this file, for example, for six, seven months. And after seven months, we remember that we wanted to add something or we wanted to add rating. Okay. I'm really bad with typing here. If we wanted to add a rating, so what would we do here? So let's start, like, let's say at the number of 100. We will start to use rating. So any records before number 100 will not have any ratings. And starting from the 100, we will start to do the ratings here. So the columns here, or let's say the attribute has been added, right? The problem is whenever we have something like this, then to be able to distinguish between whether this number is, or let's say this specific line has rating or not, you will have to do some operation or some processing to make sure is this like file is really doesn't have rating or or let's say we are talking about the movie itself. Is it because it doesn't have rating? Or is, is it missing? Or it's just like at the first place, there were, there were like no rating for that specific lines, right? So these are one of the problems that we have. So let's go with the problems that we might encounter in terms of uh, using flat file to store our data. So the first one is redundancy. So when we say redundancy there, let me just like try to clear things out here. So it's all the ink. As you can see, 
the thing that we might have here is the general here. You can see if we have like a 10 or 20, it might not be a problem. But if we have like, let's say, thousands or millions of records here or lines. So we have a huge redundancy because I have to type drama for each movie that is related to that or uh, related to that specific genre, right? So there's a huge redundancy here, right? Because I cannot... So there's no link between these two lines, even though they are at the same, uh, in the same genre, but there's no physical link between them, right? So I have to go through and find a way to reduce the redundancy. And this is just like one of the problem. So when we say like uh, another problem that we might face is the data uh, integrity. And when we say a data integrity, we mean that we might do something like, let's say, if you wanted to add a new, let me just like make sure, yeah. So if I wanted to add a new entry here, but instead of serial number, I just like inserted a letter here. What is gonna be here? For sure it's gonna be a problem for me because it doesn't make sense to show just like a letter instead of just like the serial number, for example, right? Even like for the people who's visiting your website, if there's a specific uh, meaning for this serial number, it might give you just like bad uh, interpretation for this number. So when we say data integrity, we means we cannot have any data but with the specific parameters or with the specific uh, requirements. So when we say the serial number should be just number, then we cannot accept any other values but numbers, right? So this is just data integrity. And if you are using flat files, that means we cannot have uh, this kind of integrity unless we implement these kind of validation or verification on the application level, not on the database level, okay? Which is gonna add more complexity to your uh, implementation at the end of the day. So inconsistent means like, okay, I know that it's important for me to have like, let's say, let me just get everything here. So I know that the, let's say the general here should be a string. And as you can see, all these values here are a string, right? But what if we just like mistyped? So instead of action, I just like replace one, uh, let's say, character here, just like it was completely mistyping. So for us as just like a visitor, as like for the system, it might think as this genera is completely different than this genera, right? So if the user, he's trying to find just the movies that relate to the action, he will just get number four. He will not be able to see number five because for the system, number five is completely than, uh, it's completely different than the one in number four. So these are the things that we call consistent. It's true, it's like, in, like from the data integrity perspective, it's the integrity is okay. So the data is there, we are good. But when we are talking about consistency, no, it's not consistent. So another problem that we might face, which is the big file size. So big file size means like whenever we have a growing data, uh, data the more data we have, the more size uh, file we get, right? And whenever we have a bigger file size, then we are going to have more difficulties to deal with these kind of big files. And we even, we might uh, encounter some uh, performance deficiencies because of the file size. Okay, so this is another problem. Uh, one more problem, which is the scalability. And when we are talking about scalability, it means that we may increase or decrease the, uh, like, let's say, uh, the system 
without uh, just like do something related to uh, the quality of the service. So we can say whenever you, you increase or decrease the, uh, let's say, the capabilities of your system, it's not going to affect the quality of your service at the end of the day. So let's say if you have a really, uh, let's say, a flat file, and you would expect to receive a results within three seconds, it doesn't matter whether like this big file is, let's say, five uh, kilobytes or five megabytes. So you have to have this kind of functionality. So you might scale up or scale down, but without affecting the overall quality of your service. Another problem, which is usually uh, comes with uh, when we are talking about flat files, is security problems. Because in security, uh, like in, in the environment where a file system is used, one of like the biggest mistakes or uh, the let's say the misconfiguration is considered to be the hardest one. Because most of the time you will not be able to. Uh, discover these kind of flaws unless you have uh, there sound like some breaches in your system. So privilege misconfiguration is one uh, big problem for using flat file as a just like, uh, let's say, uh, as a backend. And another thing which is usually would be one of the problem, which is a race condition, where if you have concurrent uh, let's say, operations or tasks that access the same file and try to uh, do some operation on the file at the same time, then if you don't manage the uh, locking for the file in a good way, then you might have a problem. And if you do just like uh, a really good mechanism to control which request uh, deal with the content first, then you might encounter some performance deficiencies there. Another problem with using flat file as a database is no constraints. So I cannot say uh, I want to just like having unique data. I cannot say uh, that I wanted to add more indexing or I wanted to index that specific attribute to make sure like each request for query is going to be more efficient and it's going to be faster. So we cannot have these kind of constraints on the database level, so we cannot have it on the flat file uh, level. For sure, we can have all these kind of functionality, but on the application level, not on the database level. So another thing which is really uh, important and it's obvious problem is there's no standardized method to access data. So you might have one developer who has uh, a really good, uh, let's say, uh, approach to open and deal with the files, and you might have another uh, one who is really poor developer who cannot just like consider anything but open the file and just like write or read content from there. So it depends, there is no standardized way even to fetch data or insert data, and this is just like another problem with uh, using flat file as a backend for your database. So another uh, operation or another uh, option that comes instead of like to replace the flat file was to go with a related database management system, which is the database that you already uh, learned about, where all our data are stored as tables, and all these tables might have some stuff as let's say relational database, and most of the time in our database, we have our data stored in a table here. And when we say a table, a table is just a collection of rows and columns, right? So here, the attributes are the columns and the entries or the rows are the actual data or the data point that we have. And the good thing with the relational database is we can just like reduce some of uh, or to overcome some of the mutation that has uh, that we can encounter in flat file. So let's go with some of the advantages of using a relational database. We reduce redundancy. So for example, here we instead of just like using a hard coded 
just like general here, we might have another table which has all the generals here and we just like do a relation between this table and the other table and in this case if we change just like the title here it should reflect on all the places here and this is just like the power of uh, let's say uh, of the database where we might apply some of the normalization techniques to reduce the redundancy and for data integrity for sure it's one of the biggest advantage of uh, using database because we can enforce what kind of data to expect to be inserted or entered in that specific uh, column. Consistency, we have like all the time, since we already know what should be there, we can have some uh, consistency. And again, it's relational here. And with usually relational means uh, if we using uh, like, let's say, uh, if we want to represent some data in a relational way, which is maybe this is just like the, the nature of that data, then the relation, relational here is another uh, key, uh, let's say, uh, feature for using relational database. And as I said, by using uh, relational and we apply some of normalization, we can reduce the redundancy. And for sure, one of the advantages is that we may use uh, constraints where we can just like say this uh, attribute or this column should be a unique data we even like just can do some indexing as you learn in your database class where we can just like you know what we can do uh, based on the review we let's say I can just like create an index on the review so I can have more uh, let's say faster uh, query from the database here and another important one like let's say feature or advantage for relational database is by using a standardized query language which is SQL so I have one specific language where I can use it to interact with the database if I want to create a table then there's one specific uh, statement that I can use to create table if I want to insert or uh, fetch data from database, there's a centralized way that I can just like go with it and achieve the specific task. Another thing which is really important for the database is the security. Uh, it's not uh, as low security as a flat file, but they have like some set of uh, security mechanism where we can use it. Another thing which is really uh, important for relational database management system, most of the, uh, the systems that we got, we, we have, we would usually have some functionality to make a backup and uh, recovery uh, for our data. And if you compare this specific uh, point with the flat file, usually the flat file should be done by the administrator on the system level, not on just on the database level, right? But since like all these advantages looks good and it's really important and uh, like to make sure our data is more, uh, let's say accurate and uh, it's safer for the user to go with accurate data, but there are some disadvantages comes with these advantages. So one of the main disadvantages of using a relational database is complexity. Most of the time when like the more uh, functionalities we have, the more complexity uh, it's going to be included into your system. Uh, another thing which is really important, which is in databases, if you are using one specific, let's say you are using MySQL or you are using NoSQL database uh, server or management system, then we have a one single point of failure. And when we say we have one single point of failure, we means whenever like the server that has your data is down, then you will not be able to access your data. And to overcome this problem, many administrators, they will have uh, some workaround where they might have multiple servers, they are merged together, or they have uh, formed as a cluster where whenever we have one of them 
or one of the servers down, then the other one is going to be used. But at like the basic foundation for it is database management system has one single point of failure in nature. Okay, and to overcome this problem, as I said, usually will come with come up with a new solution to make it uh, more scalable. So another disadvantage here for relational database management system is uh, vertical scalability. And when we say uh, vertical scalability, that means whenever we need more, uh, let's say, proficient system, then we can just increase the resources to that specific system. So let's say if our system has 4 GB, uh, let's say, of RAM as a memory, right? If I wanted to increase the, let's say, the scalability of our of my system, I may include an additional one or additional, uh, let's say, memory to make it eight instead of four, and this what we call it vertical scalability. So vertical scalability, you just improving the current machines. So it's on the machine. That's why we call it vertical. So if we say that. This is our machine here. Vertical means I can stack up some of the new uh, CPUs, new memory as a stack on a vertical axis, right? So this is just like one of the disadvantages and we will know uh, in the, like uh, when we are talking about NoSQL, how this problem has been solved. So another disadvantage, which is cost, and for sure, if you wanted to use non-open uh, source or non-free, uh, you will have to pay as a license. So it's not that, uh, let's say, free, or it's not that cheap to go with um, a specific database management system. And for sure, since there's some standardized uh, languages, you will have to uh, learn how to deal or how to write an SQL. If you are managing this database management system, you will have to uh, understand how to manage all the aspects of this specific database management system. Another thing which is really a uh, downside, is considered to be like one of the bright downside of a uh, database is performance because whenever you have like a really growing data, a really big data, then you will have some problem with the performance, especially if you have a poor design. So the way that you design your database, it might harm your overall performance of your uh, system. So another disadvantage is like it's really hard to recover lost data. So whenever you have uh, data and it's been lost without any uh, prior backup, it's going to be hard for you to retrieve these lost data. Finally, which is uh, export data limitation. So most of the management system uh, available in the market, they have some uh, limited, uh, let's say, options to export data. They might have XML, they might have uh, comma separated files, but it might not the best fit for just like using uh, these uh, tools to, or let's say this export uh, functionality to just import data from there to your own web application. So you might have like more disadvantages. As I said, this is not just like a course for, uh, let's say, a database, but it's just like important for you to understand why did we came up with all these technology. So another, or let's say another type of database, which is the no SQL database, which is mainly found to overcome some of the limitations of relational database management system. And for non-SQL database, there are many types of non-SQL database. We have key value store, we have like a tabular uh, database, we have even document based. All right. But let's see like, this is just like really a uh, good drawing here, which is if you are care more about functionalities than the scalability and the performance, then you would might you might go with let's say relational database 
management system because it might provide you with some functionalities that is not available on uh, NoSQL uh, platforms. But when you are talking about scalability and performance, then NoSQL might be a better option for you. And in most cases, and um, let's say in many websites, they care more about the scalability than the performance, right? So it's just like a trade-off. It's whether you want to go with functionality over scalability and performance or the other way around. So usually you would ask yourself, it might not be the one who should answer this one, but if you have like a database uh, administrator, then... Uh, like another people who's gonna take care of this question, but if you have the choice, then which one you should go with? It's important for you to understand in which scenario you should go with related database and in which scenario you should go with no SQL database. So you would go with related database if you think of, or let's say the functionality is more important than the performance. So this just like the first rule. Another rule, which is, if you think you will be able to do a vertical scalability instead of horizontal scalability, then you should go with the vertical scalability. And you might not encounter horizontal scalability before, but the thing is, when we mention, let's say, scalability there, or vertical scalability, we've been moving to the top here. Okay, so at the end of the day, the baseline here is that we have one specific machine and we wanted to increase the resources here, right? But when we are talking about horizontal scalability, that means we are going in our horizontal way. So that means we might have a machine that has some of our data and we have another machine that has some of our data. And by the way, like most system administrator, when they are using like um, when I said like single point of failure in a relation database management system, we are talking about this specific scenario. And most of the system administrator, when they wanted to overcome this problem, they will do the same thing as horizontal scalability, right? So they just like increase the number of machines that holds the same data. But if we've been able to do this, why did we say that relational database is just like a vertical uh, scalability, right? We mentioned that because there's no inside feature with relational database system that includes to have these kind of uh, scalability as a horizontal scalability, okay? So another factor that we may think of where like our data is relational in nature and the relation here is really important for us. So we should go with relational database. So for example, for banking systems, it might be more beneficial to go with relational database because we wanted to enforce and uh, let's say, wanted to make sure that the data is in its relational uh, nature, right? And Another important thing, which is a structure really change. If we design our database, when do we expect to change the structure of our database? So for example, if we have one table with five columns, right? If we wanted to change this table to add one additional column, how much time it's gonna take to just like change it? Are we going to change it even like in the future? Sometimes some applications might not have like changed any of its structure for years because there's no need. When they just design the database, they just like consider all the possibilities for there and they just like design one structure for the database. So sometimes it's spirit choice uh, if you don't have a real, like uh, changeable uh, data nature. So then you may stick with relational database because it's just like easier for you to go with. So when do we go with NoSQL database or when uh, NoSQL database would be a better option? If we have 
a huge amount of data because like the problem with a relational database is the more data you have, the more uh, performance deficiencies you get. So in another word, more data leads to less performance because to perform a specific task or uh, run a specific statement on related database system, it's gonna take more time, which in return affect your performance. But if you have a NoSQL database, then we should go with, uh, let's say, if we have a huge amount of data, then NoSQL database might be a better option for you. If relational database, or let's say uh, the data nature we have, uh, it's not relational. So um, we can say relational data is not important for us, then we should go with NoSQL database. If we uh, don't have a specific structure for our data, or even the data is changing over the time, right? It should be just like uh, an option for you to go if you have this kind of uh, situation. If you don't, uh, like, if the constraints or joints, and most of the time we are talking about joints more than uh, the constraints because you already can build your own uh, constraints in NoSQL database. But in nature, if we don't care about joints where we, like, our data should be placed in multiple ways or multiple places, and we should join all these data together to get a specific data or uh, results, then you should go with NoSQL database, right? And if we've been able to do horizontal scalability, or if we are looking for horizontal scal scalability, then we should go with NoSQL database because it's gonna be over us like more uh, robust system at the end of the day. So one of the NoSQL uh, database, which is MongoDB, uh, I think like most of you guys have at least heard about this term before, but MongoDB is just like an open source uh, document-oriented database. And when we say document-oriented database, that means all our data are represented as a document, okay? And it's the way it's working, it's almost the same thing as the uh, object of JSON object that you already familiar with. Uh, so the store data is gonna be stored as key value pair here, as you can see. So this is just like the main thing about MongoDB. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about like some of the features for uh, MongoDB. It's really important for you to go through all these kind of uh, stuff because it's really important uh, to see like whether this uh, specific solution is a good fit for you or not. So the first one is going to be the indexing. So I said before, no skill cannot have or might not have a constraint, right? But still, as you le learned before in your database class, that indexing might increase the performance of your system because the more, uh, or let's say, if you do the indexing for your database in a right way, then you will end up with increased uh, performance in terms of selecting data or fetching data. And most of the time, most of the web applications, it's gonna require more, uh, or it's like usually you would do fetching data more than you will do insert, update, or delete data. Because you might do insert or update or delete one time, right? And whenever any user visits your website, then it's gonna do the fetch. So the more uh, operation that you're gonna perform in your database is gonna be selecting your data. And if you have a really good indexing uh, design, then you will add more, uh, let's say, uh, performance uh, jump to your system. So another feature with MongoDB is the replication. So in nature, MongoDB has replication um, within the design of the database itself. When we say replication, that means we have 
something we call it a uh, master uh, slave. Okay, and when we talk about master slave, we talk about this is just like the master, and we can have multiple slaves here, or sometimes people call it secondary. Okay, so your data is not just like stored in one place, it's stored in multiple places. So MongoDB in nature is replication in nature. So whenever you have a new database, it's gonna create an auto replication or each replica here will have almost the same data. So here we overcome some of the problems which is a single uh, point of failure. So whenever, let's say this is the master, if the master goes down, then one of the secondary will be upgraded as, uh, let's say, a master, and the rest will be remain the same. And all these kind of operations, it's done automatically. So there's no need to just like any intervention by the system administrator here. Okay. And this is just like one of the things that is really important when we are talking about uh, the features of uh, MongoDB, right? So another thing which is really important or another feature which is really important is load uh, balancing. And since load balancing here is like our, let's say in another word, let me just like go first with the horizontal scalability because these two are tightly related together. So when we say horizontally uh, scalability, that means our data is separated or let's say it's not just like in one place, it's on multiple places, right? So the way it's working, we call this as shredded or shredding or this one we call it shred one, shred two, shred three. So when you will receive any request for your data to your master, then the load balancing will understand which one or which node in your cluster here should handle this request to make sure not to overwhelm one of the nodes uh, to the others, right? So it's really important to understand like what's the difference between these two because horizontal scalability means that you have multiple uh, replica here that you can use and load balancing is really related between replication, load balancing and horizontal because you wanted to make sure not to overload one of the nodes with many requests where the others are at rest, okay? So let me just like delete things here. So another important feature, which is really uh, important for, for you to get, is large media uh, storage. And in this, if you have a really large file, what MongoDB would do to store these kind of binary data, it's gonna be split into like small chunks. And there's something they call it grid file system or uh, grid FS. If you want, you can look it up. But this is just like the way it's working with MongoDB. Whenever you have a really big uh, file, it's gonna be split into smaller uh, chunks. Sometimes these chunks uh, goes like around uh, 255 or 256 uh, kilobyte. These are like the way that it's gonna be stored. It's gonna be stored as a binary uh, SUN file, which is gonna take the advantage of the JSON uh, structure, but just like for, uh, let's say, uh, binary file. So you can just like look up something like, let me, Son. This is just like the same thing as JSON, but for binary files. So another thing which is like high performance, when we talked about uh, high performance, we said 
if we have like really horizontal scalability, we have more replications and we have indexing uh, mechanisms that we can apply to our database, then all combining all these things together might lead to a higher performance for your system, even if you have a really big amount of uh, data. Another feature in uh, MongoDB, which is the aggregation, and aggregation, like in many databases, you can just like do some aggregation functionality, such as you will do some uh, rows counter, you will do uh, averaging, all these kind of stuff you can perform on a uh, national database, you might have some of these, uh, let's say, aggregation functionalities. And in most cases, you will can build your own aggregation. This is just like one another uh, power, uh, let's say, uh, point for uh, the aggregation here in MongoDB. And the last feature, which is the ad hoc uh, queries support. And most of the time, you don't need to have a prior knowledge of, uh, let's say, uh, a structure or even uh, how your data is stored. All you need to do is just like type, what are you looking for? And you will get, uh, get this data. So in most times, if you are using related database management system, you will have to know how your table is structured so you can type your own uh, SQL, right? But when it comes to MongoDB, you don't need to go with this. All you need to do is just like pass the things that you wanted to uh, or you are looking for. So if you are looking for uh, data, let's say uh, a record with the number of ID of one, then all you have to care about is to pass, I'm looking for ID equal to one, and that's it. You don't need to care about like where is it located. You have uh, nothing to do with this. So right now you might have, okay, what's the equivalent terminology that we I'm already familiar with related database management system in MongoDB. So this, I found like this really good uh, representation here to make just a bridge between these two. So in relation database management system, we call database and equally we have the same name. So in relation database, we usually have tables and in NoSQL database or MongoDB, uh, like to be more specific, the terminology that we are using for the tables equivalent is collections. And for the rows, we are using a document. And for the columns, we are using the term field. And if you can see here, this is just like a table versus a collection, right? As you can see, in relational database here, we have the table student ID, we have student name, we have age, and we have college, right? So each one of them, like the whole object, represents one row here. And that's why we call this a document, right? And each column here is just like the key that is available in your database. So as you can see, student ID, student name, age, and college, the same thing. And the entry for each one of them, or the values here, would be just like the value coming from your row uh, in the table. So another important thing, which is just like uh, another feature for MongoDB, which is you can have a dynamic schema. So let's go back to here. In this document, for example, what if we wanted to add a new column here just for this specific document? It shouldn't be like for the previous ones. What we should do? So MongoDB has functionality that we can add a new data here, which means it's gonna be key and value, and that's it. So that's 
what we meant when we say it supports dynamic uh, data. So here we can say MongoDB supports dynamic schema, which means one document may have a collection of four fields, while the other document uh, has only three fields, which is, as I said, it's not possible in relational database. So you cannot have the same functionality in relational database. All you can do is just include a new column. If you wanna perform the same thing, you would do the same thing here. And instead of just like filling all the data here, you will do null here, and you will just type your data in this area. And this is gonna add more space to your database, which as I said, is gonna harm your, or let's say harm the performance of your system. So when you are dealing with database, uh, in the database, usually you would do some uh, operations. Some of these operations are done once, and like some of them is really you will just like do it. So you will just like when you wanted to create, uh, let's say a table or database, or even like drop these uh, objects, it's just like be less uh, frequent because you can just like create database one time and you will create the collections or the tables, right? But when it comes to fetching data or do a select uh, some data or fetch data based on either like to list everything you have or even just like fetch some specific uh, data, then it's gonna be frequent. Insert, update, and delete, it's gonna be frequent, but it's gonna be less frequent than fetching uh, data. So this just like uh, come to the conclusion of the whole concepts that you need to carry on with uh, how to perform or how to reflect uh, these kind of knowledge to make it into work experience or how to make things work on the actual tools that we got. So we will go through, we will have a demo one where we will be able to go through installing MangoDB. And for demo two, we will uh, understand how to interact with MangoDB database with our Node.js. Then with uh, demo three, we will use one of the uh, most common uh, ODM tools to just like interact with our database.